Clubs in Town Hall tonight, folks. 60 minutes of fun and music brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste and Salopatica. Ipana for the smile of beauty. Salopatica for the smile of health. Fun with our star comedian Fred Allen. Music with Peter Van Steeden. And another big amateur contest. New voices, new music, new fun. It's Town Hall tonight. <laughs> Parade to the old town hall. Fred hurling kisses to the crowd, and the crowd is hurling insults to the mighty Allen Art players. Let's join the happy throng. Everybody's going. Here they come. Photographer's plan. Now smile, now snap your picture, Mrs. Jones. If you want me to smile, turn on that radio, mister. It's town hall tonight. Political candidates. Do you absolutely refuse to run for governor again, Mr. Beeman? I refuse to run for anything but the radio, madam. It's town hall tonight. Hitchhiker. Hey, if you want a lift, buddy, jump in the car. Thanks, mister, but I'm waiting for a bus with the radio. It's town hall tonight. Town Hall, there's Fred, guy twister in hand, ready to make old jokes sound like new. Let's listen. We haven't come to bury Caesar, folks. We're just here to open up the old town hall. Now jam right in. If you can't get through the door, you'll find all of the windows open. Howdy, Mr. Allen. Howdy, Mrs. Finn. They close that umbrella before you go inside. Hi there, Humbug. Hi there, Lancaster. How's the old boy? Hip top, Alan. I'm fit as a steam pipe and ready to hiss. That's what they all say, folks. So hurry, 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 hurry. Peter's got on his poison in midair, Fred. Okay, Harry. We're opening with celebrate. Right, old Fred. We're celebrating, Peter. <laughs> Presenting that Himalayan hooligan of Herculean hysterical huzzah and highfalutin higgledy piggledy, Fred Allen in person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before taking the top off the chafing dish to show you the rare bits we've cooked up for you this evening, I'll read you the town hall bulletin for tonight. Arch White. Demon of Delicatessen has just set a new crate of oranges outside the store. Now, for the benefit of you folks who can't pass a fruit stand without handling the fruit, Arge is putting a special orange on top of the crate. Arge says if you're one of those chronic fruit dealers and can't hold in passing the crate, you can just squeeze this audition orange and go on about your shopping. <laughs> So much for rhyme tweaking, and now for the <laughs> now for the town hall news. You look about one sheet in the wind, Harry. Well, it must be the picture sheet, Fred. Here she comes. <laughs> the lights go out, and we bring you the latest news of the week. The town hall news sees nothing, shows all. New Brunswick, New Jersey. Dr. J. M. Ginsburg at Rutgers University perfects insecticide to keep mosquitoes away from Jersey weddings. Town Hall News shows how New Jersey weddings may come off with new mosquito-proof services. The scene: a church anteroom. Hello, Hello Parsons. Parsons. Well, my children, are you ready to take the fatal step? Yes, I got the ring and license right here. And the bus tickets for Niagara Falls are in my purse. Very good. 
Yeah, there's just one more thing. Uh, the fee? Well, uh, two more things, I should say. As you know, this is a Jersey wedding. Oh, you mean the mosquitoes, Parson? Yea, verily, the mosquitoes. Have they been bothering you, Parson? Have they? At a wedding last week, I said, Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? The bride said, Out. <laughs> uh, where was she stung? Directly behind the sanctuary, brother. <laughs> Oh, it was very painful. Oh, I'm getting out of here, Parson, with this great machine dress. Don't worry, sister. Precautions will be taken. Okay, let's go. The chapel's through this door. Oh, dear, I'm so nervous. I can't wait for this. Now, as the congregation will stop the hum of conversation, we are gathered here to join in holy wedlock. Your name, young lady? Daphne Spangle. And your name, young man? Cornwall Pepper. We are gathered here to join in matrimony Daphne Spangle and Cornwall Tuzzle. As this is a New Jersey wedding, before we start the services, the mosquito exterminator men will pass down the aisle. Are you ready, gentlemen? Yes, Parson. Okay, Parson. Then let us pray, brothers. Let us pray. <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri. Dr. Bertha Van Hoosen at American Medical Convention claims that the outlook for women doctors in medicine is brightening. Town Hall News shows what may happen when women doctors are called in to treat patients. The scene, the sick chamber at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Elmer Tiddle. How do you feel, honey? Oh, I'm dying, Elmer. I'll never live to get out of this bed. Well, didn't that hot water bottle help, any? It was ice cold when you put it in the sheet. I'm getting it warmed up a little. Well, you'll be all right in a jiffy, dear. I just called that woman doctor across the street. Here she is now. Oh, tell her to hurry, Elmer. My wife is right in here, doctor. Well, 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 what's wrong with you, darling? Oh, I'm dying. You've got awful chills, doctor. Chills? Really? Well, just let me feel your pulse. Which hand? The left. Oh, my dear, what a beautiful wristwatch. Where did you get this cute marble? At Tiffany's. Is it a bad case, doctor? It's a beauty. Now, let me see your tongue, dear. All of it? Yes, uh, just say, ah, ah. Oh, darling. Doctor, is it anything serious? What divine bridge work. Oh, yes, it was terribly expensive. $800. Now, now doctor. Oh, I... that's robbery, darling. I have the same bridge in my mouth. Only $75. $75? Yes, he's a marvelous dentist. But you have to walk up four flights. Doctor, how are her tonsils? Please, Mr. Tittle, I'm diagnosing. Now, uh, where were we? You were reaching for your stethoscope. Oh, yes. Sit up here. I'll just check up on your heart. I'll help you. My dear, what a beautiful nightgown. It's in Forty Two Killer. Forty five dollars. Forty five? Uh, well, I saw the same nightgown at Klein's for eight ninety five. Eight ninety five? Yes, it's a sale today only. Oh, I'll get dressed right away. Oh, don't bother dressing, darling. You know Klein's. Well, I can just slip on my bathrobe and Yes, I'll run you down in my car. Oh, she can't go out with that fever, Doctor. Why not? Her temperature is 106. 106 at home, yes. At Klein's, it'll only be 98.75. <laughs> Jersey City, New Jersey. Hudson County Bar Association sends resolution to Hollywood picture producers, condemning manner in which lawyers are portrayed on the screen. Town Hall News shows how movies might look if moving picture lawyers insisted upon acting true to life. The scene on the set at any studio. Uh, quiet. Quiet, everybody. Script girl. Yes, Mr. DeHeel. Everything ready for the next scene? Yes, sir. Okay, folks, everybody on the set will shoot the trial scene. Is my robe all right for the judge part, Mr. DeHeel? Yes, Gable. You're... Look, judges don't wear swords. The script says it's general session. Generals wear swords, don't they? Now, don't quibble, Gable. Now, get up on the bench. Uh, Cecil, darling. Yes, Miss Barlow. Do you mind if I use cod liver oil tears instead of the glycerin? No, but don't get your tears too big for the close-ups. It'll look like your eyeballs are rolling out. <laughs> we're ready to shoot, Mr. DeHeel. All right, now, folks, this is the big trial scene in the wayward attorney. Miss Barlow's on the stand telling her pitiful story. You ready, Dean? Yes, Cecil. Wendell Hogg, the big banker. That's you, Montgomery. I know, Cecil. After the girl says you jilted her, a strange lawyer rushes into the courtroom. It's the wayward attorney. Yeah, that's me. Yes, so. But a lawyer wouldn't rush into a courtroom, Mr. DeHeel. Lawyers have a certain dignity, you know, even in flight. Now, I'm directing this picture tone. And I'm playing a true-to-life lawyer, DeHeel. I'm not dashing into any courtroom with my briefcase stiffened in the breeze. Now, see here, so. This trial scene is costing the company two million dollars. We're using 5,000 extras, 2,000 witnesses, and 800 prosecuting attorneys. You've got to protect the company's investment and play the lawyer the way it's written. Well, if it'll save the company, I'll rush in. But I'll rush with decorum. Okay, let's do the scene. You start the action, Judge. 
Camera up. And you say this beast, Wendell Hogg, proposed to you in a phone booth? Yes, Judge. He asked me to be his wife. Then he called Circle 7-something. Did he get his number? No, I got it, Judge. Oh, you poor child. He shall pay you well. He shall pay you well. Cut! Where is the wayward attorney? Tone! Yes, Mr. DeHeel. He shall pay you well is your cue. That's where you come rushing in. I know, but I don't have to come rushing in now. We can cut the trial scene right out of the picture. What? Yeah, you want the lawyer to protect the company's interest, don't you? Yes. I've just saved the company two million dollars. How? I've settled the case out of court. <laughs> So much for the town hall news, ladies and gentlemen, and now for our pan mail. Oh, you mean fan mail, don't you, Fred? Well, I'll let you decide that, Harry, after I read this letter I got yesterday. It says, Dear Fred, please tell Harry Von Zell we all think he's grand. Oh, what did I tell you? It's fan mail. Up to now, it's fan mail, yes. The panning starts directly. Uh-oh. Quote, Please tell him to correct the error he always makes when he talks about salopatica. Harry always says, put two teaspoonfuls of salopatica in a glass of water and drink it. He should say, two teaspoons full, unquote. Uh, you're right, Fred, it is pan mail. Well, it's <laughs> a nice point, Harry, and while we're on the subject, what have you uh, got to say for yourself? Well, Fred, all I know is what I read in the dictionaries, and both Funk and Wagnalls and Webster say that the plural of teaspoonful is teaspoonful. And the Messrs. Funk, Wagnalls, and Webster have a reputation for being somewhat accurate, haven't they? Yes, I guess they have, Fred. But after all, it doesn't really matter a great deal which way you say it, so long as you take salopatica when you need it. And when you're feeling dull and logy and out of sorts, when you have waste in your body and acid in your system, that is the time to think of salopatica. Because salopatica is the mineral salt laxative especially designed to do not just one, but two things. To remove waste from your body and also to combat acidity. I get it, Harry. So whether you fill the same spoon twice or use two different teaspoons... It really doesn't matter. Just put that much salopatica in a glass of water and drink it. The important thing is to feel alert, alive, and normal again. So remember salopatica for the smile of health. <laughs> Eden and the Arpana Troubadours have just played a new song dedicated to all kibitzers entitled I'll Stand By. <laughs> now, on Saturday afternoon, yes, the uh, Uncle Van. Yes, quiet, quiet, please. This is the uh, etc. Miss Pa. Hello. <laughs> Well, sir, they laughed when I kept nodding at the auctioneer. They didn't know I knew his family back in South Bend. If it isn't Portland. Yes, I'm going down to the library for Papa, so I thought I'd look in. What does Papa want with a book? Is his fly swatter broken? <laughs> oh, you can laugh, but Papa's well read. Around the nostrils, especially. <laughs> oh, you can poke fun, but Papa's got his nose in a book. Practically all day long. Well, you can't learn anything smelling literature. <laughs> Papa has to keep his nose in a book. He's 
It's nearsighted. Really? How does he turn the pages? By uh, inhaling? <laughs> no, Papa uses his tongue. He's so nearsighted, he says hello to people walking behind him. Yeah. <laughs> well, as the pallbearer said when he felt something stirring on his shoulder, that's life, isn't it? I'll say, Shakespeare said, life is a game of bridge, and you never can tell when you'll meet a dummy. You're not, <laughs> you're not uh, getting personal by any chance. Oh, how could Shakespeare know that you'd be born? <laughs> Shakespeare, that reminds me. What did Papa have to say about the, uh, the liquor wall last week? Papa wasn't interested. I think he stopped drinking. What makes you think Papa's on the wagon? Well, lately, he's been yelling, whoa, in his sleep. You know, <laughs> if they only made the wickets a little larger, you could use Papa's head for croquet. Oh, I get it. You mean Papa's mallet-headed. Well, I wouldn't say that. What would you say? Only this. If Papa ever goes to get his head red, the phrenologist is going to find himself behind the eight ball. <laughs> oh, you'll find out. Sir Jack! Oh, don't bring no those two. I don't... Coming, Forstnitschke. Gapping on it, Boris. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Forstnitschke. What this is... This is no customs office. If this fellow wants to clear his throat, if these if, if these immigrants who is calling who the immigrant, Mister Nasty Crack? That's right, Mister Allen. Your people didn't come over on the Mayflower, did they? What? His people? They are coming over in a Greyhound bus. <laughs> Am I smelling a rat, Boris? <laughs> <laughs> what does Boris say, Sergey? He is saying he also is smelling a rat, but it could be him. <laughs> That's the first thing we've agreed on up to now. <laughs> what did he say, Sergey? Boris is not one to beating around the strawberry. He is coming to the point. He says, ho, ho. Does uh, Boris know what mayhem means? I will put him to the quiz. Boris, you are catching on mayhem. Steady, steady, Boris, steady. Is it yes or no, Sergey? It is yes. <laughs> Boris, to me, is saying confidentially, April showers is bringing mayhem flowers. <laughs> you boys know, of course, that a punch in the septum is the same in any language. I am not one to beginning the rough stuff, my friend. But watch out for Boris. Is Boris a roughneck, Sir Gay? A roughneck? Listen, where Boris comes from is so tough. That is why he comes from there. <laughs> where I come from, it's so tough, Boris would wish he was back where he came from. <laughs> oh, cut it out, fellas. Sergey's here on business. What's his business? Hijacking sturgeon for caviar? <laughs> I am here to arrange audition for great artist, Boris. Boris, eh? Something tells me he will. Boris is the great Balkan teller, Mr. Allen. Right, Boris? <laughs> Consequently... What was that? <laughs> Boris is sending his compliments, and I shall tell you, he is hitting a high C like a gull. Now, who ordered that? Nobody, I think. He is warming up. Oh, boy, wait till he perks, Mr. Allen. I wish I had a no perking sign for about two minutes. Why, uh, Boris will singing for you the road to Mandalay with cold cuts. With... With cold cuts. Excuse me, my dinner is talking back. <laughs> I am meaning road to Mandalay with shortcuts. Does he use music or does he sing from a road map, Sir Gay? Quiet. Boris would not commencing until you are hearing a pin drop. If you hear something drop right after the pin, it'll probably be Boris. Segway! He is starting. And I am starting. Quiet, to... Chisler. Where do you think you are? Carnegie Hall? The time is right, Boris. On tiptoe, I am asking you kindly. The road to Mandalay. Where the flying fishes 
the palace. You can hear the potters cheering of a guilty in a cross. And the man on the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play. And the storm comes up like thunder of duty and all the way. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Yes, that was well, Morris. And we are not accepting your first offer, Shyster. Who said anything? <laughs> who said who? Who's making an offer? Aren't you going to take Boris, Mr. Allen? Yes, I'm going to take Boris. I'm going to take him outside. And Sergey, too. Good. I am leading the way. So long, boys. Goodbye, Portland. Tally ho! <laughs> Now, the Town Hall Quartet, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the boys sing a hillbilly masterpiece. That feud theme song, The Martins and the Coy. Gather round me, children, and I'll tell a story Of the mountains in the days when guns were slow When two families got disputing, it was bound to But I'm carrying a slingshot during the Depression. I uh, I can tell you how that uh, feud came out. Well, start a spouting, stranger. Now, the soul remaining Martin was a maiden. And as pretty as the picture was the grace. While the one surviving boy was the handsome Henry Coy. And the folks all knew they'd soon meet face to face. So they finally met up on a mountain pathway And Henry Coy, he aimed his gun at Grace He was set to pull the trigger When he seen her pretty figure You could see that love had jigged him in the face Now you may think this is where the story ended But I'm telling you there's still an unbite more Cross since Grace and Henry wedded, they fight worse than all the rest did. And they carry on the feud just like me. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, without the slightest bit of encouragement, we delve into the Elizabethan drama. Time marches backward. The 15th century. The courtyard of Baron Twerp's castle. Half <laughs> cock crowed, my lord, not home yet. A pox on the man and his banquet. Oh, good morrow, my good woman, and hi ho. <laughs> so, thou finally returned. So, what? So, nothing. You haven't even been missed. You and your banquet. You ate yourself all out of shape, I'll wager. And you wouldn't lose a penny. 
such a table. A fair creek neath the weight of the roast boar, beef, thick, fowl, pheasant, venison, and hogsheads of ale to wash it all down. Well, if you think gossiping yourself with food like that will do you any good, you, you, you... Well, the rest doesn't really matter. The point is that the Baron did get some good out of that banquet. Because those tough, fibrous foods did give his teeth and gums the kind of exercise they needed to keep them healthy. Unfortunately, our modern diets include so many soft, creamy foods that they don't give our gums the much-needed stimulation. That's why we say, every time you brush your teeth with Ipana toothpaste, always massage a little extra Ipana into your gums for the stimulation they need to help guard against serious gum trouble. That's what Ipana was made for. So you'll have firmer, healthier gums and far lovelier teeth if you'll always remember Ipana for the smile of beauty. Well, there's the theme song of the Mighty Allen Art Players, and they'll be with you immediately after your station announcement. Gentlemen, for those too weak to flee, we present the mighty Allen R. Players. These are the first actors to ever have the censors close a play because of vulgar language used by the audience. <laughs> Tonight, these drones in the hive of theaterdom bring you a drama of the backwoods called Trombone Annie, or when the roll is called up yonder, there'll be nothing left to play on the drum. Over it's your Peter. <laughs> Arkansas, Zeke Allen. Well, You're getting worse than your old grandpappy. Oh, grandpappy wasn't just lazy, Ma. He was toppy. Uh, there's talk that when they filed off his derby to get him in the coffin, they found an owl's nest in his hair. Yeah, yeah. Good old grandpappy passed away at 91. Relax. You ain't telling me he defied rigor mortis. Yep, yep. Died up in our old oak tree, limp as a buggy whip. What the entire nation was here doing up in an oak tree at 91? Well, and Grandpappy wasn't nothing but a shaver. He sat down on an acorn. By the time he got gumption enough to move, he was 91 and up a tree. <laughs> well, well... Hey, oh, oh, quit fussing, Ma, and lift up my legs. What's you aiming to do, cross him? No, no, I ain't crossing him this time. I ain't seen our dog for nigh on to a week. I... I'm out be sitting on her. Lance, take care your aid. Come out from under there, Annie. Oh, oh Jiggers. Oh, oh. I wished my hand was up. I'd sure enough pat old Annie. That's only wasting time. Oh. That dog's getting too fat and lazy to wag her tail. Oh, quit blabbing, Ma. Get about your chores. I'm going to get all right, Z. Gallon. Our brat, Gap, and I'm a getting too. Oh, what, uh, whatever become of our kids, Ma? What do you think become of them? Did they leave home? I ain't been facing the door since 31. <laughs> Our sons is a making good, Zeke. Making good what? Don't end no sentence with no proposition, Ma. All four of our boys is joined up in amateur units, and I'm a joining up, too. Joining what? Well, I ain't sure which unit, but I auditioned for the major, and I'm a standing by. Uh, so what's your speciality? Sure ain't trucking with that chassis. <laughs> My speciality is a big hot sugar bowl. How's it? Hot diggity. Hot dog, Ma. You're a Rubinoff on the crockery, sure enough. Who's the dog? You have, Zeke. This shanty ain't no Gibraltar, you know. If folks knocks on the door around here at night, the ceiling gets into bed with me and Ma. <laughs> Uh, what's that, Mr. Benton? It's telephone message for you. It comes to Tate's door. Did you rip off the receiver and bring her with you? No, just message. Says, uh, you open at Omaha tomorrow with Unit 13. 
Signed the major. Whoop, me! Now, say here, you ain't eloping with no army man, Ma. No, I'm a going with an amateur unit, please. Where's my sugar bowl? Get the things together. Mr. Tate's waiting down the road with his sliver. <laughs> she ain't got nothing to get together. Soon's Ma slips in her false teeth, she's packed. <laughs> so long, boys. Oh, me high. Here I come. Whoop, dee! Well, she's gone. Yeah, I'm sure going to miss Ma around here, Fenton. I reckon I won't do much eating. You ain't aiming to let your grief interfere with eating, Zeke. No, take that. Ma's took our teeth. If <laughs> uh, you weren't so all fired lazy, Zeke Allen, maybe you could join up with an amateur unit yourself. Well, maybe. I, I've been laying here in one spot for ten years, hoping Ripley'd get wise to herself. <laughs> If they don't, if Bob lets me down, me and Annie will go amateur. Annie? What can that hound dog do? Well, confidential. Old Annie sings. What? You're catched, ain't you, Zeke? No, I ain't another catch. Ain't been catched since I played tag the last time. I'm telling you straight out, Annie sings like a trombone. Gospel? Gospel, Fenton. Wait, I'll show you. Come, Annie. Now, here, Annie, got a bone for you. She ain't moving. Yeah, you better call her Fenton. She knows what a liar I am. <laughs> here, here, come to Fenton, Annie. Up she's stirring. <laughs> now, you watch her when I start to sing. Carry me back. Hey, hold on, hold on. Is that you singing? What you think it is? I thought my corduroy pants was rubbing. Now, <laughs> uh, your corduroy pants ain't in F sharp. I was saying... Uh, come on, Annie. Carry me back. Oh. <laughs> Going, Annie. How's that, Fenton? Say, she ought to be with Whiteman. You ought to audition her right away. Well, I gotta bide my time, Fenton. Annie's expecting a blessed event. Gosh, you might be. Sure is pity, too. Yeah, but I ain't letting no grass grow under my spine, Fenton. Yeah, you better not. Darn picklish. <laughs> I sent me a letter up to New York, New York, NY to them amateur folks. Hot pipple trees. The dog sings like a trombone, they'll come a-running. Hey, hey, quit, quit knocking. Lord, the mantelpiece fell down. Yeah, there goes Dr. Townsend's picture. <laughs> come in, pour your knuckles, bust through the door. Uh, pardon me, buddy, does Zeke Allen live here? Well, I reckon he does. Which one of you fossils is Zeke? Zeke's a horizontal one. Oh, the lay member, huh? Well, I'm head talent scout for the major, boys. The major got your letter, Zeke. He did. Did he read it? Sure enough. Well, he couldn't read it himself. He called in a druggist. <laughs> yeah, uh... Did uh, the druggist uncode Zeke's writing? Well, he gave us the gist of the letter. The postscript turned out to be ten cents worth of ipecac. <laughs> sure enough. Now, uh, about this singing hog. Now, it's a dog, mister. The letter said hog. Oh, Lord, I must have crossed my D. <laughs> it's a dog, mister. Trombone Annie. Trombone Annie, uh, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll audition her, and if she really sings like a trombone, I'll sign you both on the spot. Oh, Annie will make good, mister, but she can't sign up yet a while. Oh, no, she's anticipating. <laughs> hey, now, quit stalling, boys. Either she sings like a trombone or she don't. Now, where is she? Uh, call Annie out in the closet, Fitton. You betcha. Here, Annie. All pelt, Annie. Come out here, Annie. Hey, what are you two mossbacks doing, kidding? She must be sleeping in the closet. Uh, you take a squint, Fitton. Yeah, make it snappy. Jeepers, leapers. Hey, Zeke, look here. What's up, Fenton? Trombone Annie's orchestrated. <laughs> well, what do you know? Five bouncing puppies. Well, unhitch my bridle and turn me loose to grass. Annie. <laughs> Say, if this has ruined her singing voice, the amateur deal is off. Keep your beret on, mister. I'll try her out, make sure. Carry me back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the usually eloquent Harry Von Zell, <laughs> although he doesn't know it yet, is going to say everything he has to say in exactly seven words. 
No more, no oh, less. Oh, just a minute, Fred. That's impossible. What do you mean, seven words? Harry, in the bright uh, lexicon of youth, there is no such phrase as what do you mean, seven words. Why, well, I'll bet even I could do it. Oh, but now listen, Fred. Suppose a man or a woman had pink toothbrush, that warning sign of tender ailing gums. How could you advise them in seven words? Oh, you could do it in three words, Harry. See your dentist. Well, I guess you're right at that, Fred. Because the dentist is the only person to interpret that warning. There's only one chance in many that pink toothbrush is the first evidence of a really serious gum disease, but see your dentist to make sure. Now, Fred, you've only got four words left. What are you going to say when our gums are soft and tender because they don't get enough exercise and stimulation from the creamy foods we eat? All right, four words. Use Ipana with massage. All right, Fred, you win. And that's sound advice, too, because Ipana is the toothpaste especially made to benefit the gums as well as to clean and brighten the teeth. That's why we always say, massage a little extra Ipana into your gums every time you brush your teeth with it. In that way, you'll give your gums the toning and stimulation they need to help guard against serious gum trouble. You see, Harry, I told you I could say everything in seven words. All right, Fred, and if you can do it, I can do it. And my seven words say everything, too. Remember, I Ipana, for the smile of beauty. <laughs> The Town Hall Amateur Contest. Here comes Fred Allen leading the winners of this week's Town Hall Amateur Audition. Let's give them a real Town Hall reception. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our amateurs tonight have been selected from the hundreds of applicants who were heard during this week's auditions. Now, tonight, these boys and girls compete for a first prize of uh, $50 and a week's engagement at the Roxy Theater in New York City and a second prize of $25 in cash. You folks here in the town hall will select your own winners. Your applause after each act will be recorded on our applause machine, and the two acts receiving the highest applause ratings will be called back later for your final vote. Now, tonight, before we start our regular amateur contest, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present two special guest stars we are fortunate enough to have with us here this evening. A great many people uh, wonder what becomes of many of the boys and girls who have appeared on our amateur contest from, si uh, from time to time. Well, uh, with those with exceptional talent, we try to keep our eyes on as far as possible until they get out of sight. And that is why we are able to present this uh, young lady and this young gentleman to you this evening. A year ago last uh, January, wasn't it, Marilyn? Okay. A year ago last Jan January, Miss Marilyn McKay, who was then working at Macy's, sang on our program. And then last July, was it Tony? That's right. Last uh, July, Tony Sharaba, the singing barber from Red Bank, New Jersey, appeared on our program. Then later on, the town hall amateur unit went out, and Marilyn met Tony, and last December, they were both married. Uh, we didn't know that the town hall was turning out to be sort of a... Uh, a uh, Masonic uh, Cupid, I might say. A Cupid <laughs> consisting of uh, plaster and mortar and microphones and one thing or another. But we're certainly happy to welcome you, Marilyn, and you, Tony, back with us here tonight. Thank Where? Uh, I guess you a little thought a year ago last January, Marilyn, when you auditioned for the program that it would, uh, things would turn out as they did, huh? I certainly didn't. You're not sorry, I hope. No. Huh? And, Tony, what have you to say? Just what she says. Oh, <laughs> already uh, Marilyn is the boss, eh? <laughs> well, uh, that's a very uh, good sign. Marilyn used to be down at Macy's, and I think you did better at Macy's than you could do at Gimbel's or Saks or <laughs> any of the other places I can think of offhand. Where have you been since we've seen you last? Well, when that unit closed, yeah. on my talk, yeah. If you don't mind. Wait a minute. Now, let's get the, the wife's permission. Is yeah. it all right? All right for Tony to carry on. Huh? When the unit closed last October, I went down to Miami, Florida, and I had a little bit of luck, and I was booked at the Royal Palm Club. And as, new, as soon as I knew that I was going to be working steadily, I called for Marilyn. She came down December 28th. We were married. Well, that's fine. And uh, you're going to... Uh, uh, what are you going to do now? Are you going to continue singing professionally? 
If I can get enough jobs, I will, yes. Well, we certainly hope here. There's no reason why you shouldn't, and we certainly hope here that you will. Now, what... Uh, so what are you going to sing for us tonight? Are you and Marilyn going to sing a duet? No, no. Marilyn's going to sing first. She's going to sing Lost. Oh, you're married and can't even sing together? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, huh? <laughs> well, Harmony has been uh, quite a time coming then. You've been married since December. Here it is, May already, and can't sing together. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, Marilyn is going to sing first. And what, may I ask? Lost. Lost. All right, thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, Tony, and permitted uh, Mrs. Sharaba to sing first. What would you like to sing? Hello. I did my singing a little while ago, and I think the less said about that. I found I was hitting on one adenoid. I didn't get the McCoy straightened out there. <laughs> but uh, you're going to sing? Alone. Alone. That's a fine thing. You've been married since last December. Marilyn sings Lost, and you're singing Alone. <laughs> We're just kidding. I thought at least one of you would sing Goody Goody or something. <laughs> Get things going. All right, alone. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Tony and Marilyn, and I know that I speak for all of us here at the town hall when I say that we all wish you nothing but happiness and prosperity uh, for your future. <laughs> 
You don't mind that, do you? There's no receipt. I just say that for all of us here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from New York City, we start our regular contest. Four young ladies, Miss Doris Davidson, Miss Olive Johnson, uh, Janet uh, Van Dorsten, is that it? Dorsten? And Miss Rhea Connett, is that right? That's right. Uh, how, are you the manager of the quartet? <laughs> well, we really don't have any manager. Oh, it's just... put my name down. Oh, the quartet just sort of goes along by itself, huh? <laughs> sort of a project, in other words. It just yeah. keeps, <laughs> just happens and then gets on the way. Well, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Jim tells me that you have a very fine piano quartet. Is that right? The four of you girls play piano? We think it's good. You think it's good. Well, Uncle Jim, that's two of you. You and Uncle Jim. And you two against just the three of us. I don't think there's much we can do about it. But uh, I were... You, you four you four of you don't play on the same piano at the oh, same no, time. Oh, no, no. I've heard of three men on a horse, but four, <laughs> four girls on a piano is rather unusual. But how... Uh, how old are... Uh, what is the average age? The you? average age is 16. 16, huh? Yes. Four of you 16. Put that all together, that would be four 16s would be... So collectively, you're 64 years old, and that's pretty old to be out playing the piano at this time of night, don't you? <laughs> well, all right, what do you, uh, where do you practice? At home? We practice with our teacher. She has two pianos. Oh, that's... Well, I, was, I just thought perhaps someone had... One piano at home, and the other three girls brought their stools overnight. <laughs> and what are you going to play for us tonight? We're going to play Anitra's Dance by Grieg. Anitra's Dance by uh, Grieg. All right. You'll find the pianos over there if you just go right ahead. I think Uncle Jim has everything in order. There are two pianos back to back there. If Uncle Jim had aces back to back years ago, he wouldn't be worrying about pianos back to back tonight. Are the girls all ready, uh, Uncle James? Gentlemen, may I present William Lanigan. Mr. Lanigan, you have come over from Brooklyn tonight, is that right? That's right, Mr. Rowe. You, uh, you have a scotch, uh, that is a scotch sort of a beret on, isn't it? A wee bit. A wee uh, bit with the red tassel on the yeah. top there, huh? A little swanky, I might say, for... <laughs> Would you mind telling me your age, Mr. Lanigan? I'm 61, Mr. Rowe. 61, huh? Yes. Uh, were you born in this country? No, I was born in Glasgow, Scotland. And how many years have you been here, may I ask? Ten years. Ten years. You yes. still have... The reason I ask, you still have sort of a burr in your voice there. Yes. I, I guess it's just like having a burr in your hair and in your voice. It's very difficult to get out. <laughs> but you're going to sing, Mr. Lanigan? Yes, Mr. Hill. What song, Mr. Lanigan? 94 This Morning. 94 This Morning. Yes. Thank you. It's nice to get up in the morning, I, and sit by the kitchen fire, and think on the things you used to do, and the girls that you admire. But a farmer's life is a healthy life when I'm feeling as good as new, and I bet a Bob you'll be surprised at what I tell to you. <laughs> I'm 94 this morning, I am 94 the day. 
I'm no so young as I used to be. I'm getting old and gray. But my heart is young and I'm fond of fun and I'm very proud to say that I'm getting married on Thursday, Han. I'm 90 for the day. <laughs> Of course, down in the village, they will get a big surprise. The people think I'm joking, and the minister's telling lies. But I will get the laugh at them, as sure as I'm alive. For there's going to be a christening yet, ha <laughs> before I'm 95. I'm 94 this morning, I am 94 the day. I'm no so young as I used to be, I'm getting old and grey. But my heart is young and I'm fond of fun and I'm very proud to say. Ah, oh, that I'm getting married to some, ah, no, 94 the day. Thank you very much. That was William Lanagan, 61-year-old singer of Scott songs. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Jersey City... I guess it'll be better to face this way, boys. You can see the piano. Do you want chairs or something? We want yeah, we want chairs. chairs. Well, Uncle Jim will get them. He uh, outfitted Radio City all by himself one <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Did all the knitting and these carpets and things Uncle Jim laid around here. <laughs> Every... <laughs> you are the two Franks, is that right? right With or without mustard, boys? <laughs> <laughs> you... We like mustard. Yeah. <laughs> You have come over from Jersey City tonight? Right. How did you come over in the, uh, in the Hudson? Uh... Oh, we swam over. You swam over, <laughs> yeah. huh? Well, that's rather upsetting. This is the iPanner program, and we're always glad to see people using the tube, you see. I thought it... <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll pull... <laughs> That just shows you that uh, iPanner asserting its popularity. You see, you just mention iPanner and the applause, the house just simply falls down. <laughs> but it's unusual to look behind two guitars, boys, and not find hillbillies. <laughs> it certainly is a pleasure for a change to find two uh, charming, I uh, mean, snappy-looking gentlemen. Charming was the wrong adjective, sort of crept out there, from Jersey City. Uh, a hill, uh, well, I won't bother with it. What would you like to play, fellas? Well, our number is Mama Don't Allow No Hot Music Playing Here. Mama Don't? You got a little too much in the title, haven't you? <laughs> title like that will run over into the chorus, boys. We'll be, I'll have to just sort of make up three or four bars here. By uh, the way, Mr. Allen. Yes? My friend is going to imitate a slap bass on a guitar. Oh, he has a, what is that, a, a special yeah. bass thing? Yeah. And you're going to imitate uh, one of those slap bull fiddles? On the right. guitar, all right. You're going to play Mama uh, Doesn't Allow No Music Around Here, No How. Confidential. Right. All right, go right ahead. Thank you. I'll bend the mic down a little here. It might help. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from Brooklyn, New York, uh, Irving Redholz. Is that right, Irving? That's right, Mr. Allen. You work over in Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn, do you? Work down in New York, sir. In New York, That's huh? That's right. you mind saying what you do or 
confidential I shan't bother with. Oh, it's quite all right. I work for the Interborough News Company. The Interborough News Company, That's eh? That's right, sir. Down in the subway? Down in the subway. <laughs> you don't... Uh, <laughs> down in the subway. Hey, you don't uh, sing opera. Uh, your, your, uh, your songs, you sing opera numbers, don't you? Operatic numbers? That's right, sir. You don't sing them while you're working down there, do you? Quite some time, I do. You do, huh? Yeah. I was wondering, I thought perhaps the Met would get after you, you know. They've started a popular prize season, and you singing opera down there where people can hear you for a nickel is <laughs> after start things going. But you're going to sing what tonight? Vesta La Juba from Pagliacci. Oh, the subway song, Jesca the La Tuba from the... Uh... <laughs> all right, go right ahead. Thank you. La juba, elle est fatia en farina. La gente paga, arrive vous le croix. Et c'est à l'iguin, et on vole au colombino. Ride per gli occhi, e l'ignun applauderà. La montagna l'asi, e il spammo e la pianerò. E non ha molto fia il chieto, e il dalò. get the last word from our applause machine, you will get the last word from Harry Von Zell. It's been a pleasure to bring this program to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and we sincerely hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, won't you remember during the week the two products that make this and every Wednesday with Fred Allen possible? Ipana Toothpaste for the Smile of Beauty, Sal Hepatica for the Smile of Health. Ipana, Sal Hepatica. All right, Fred, have you got the results oh, yes, ready? Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, the applause meter divulges that your applause has been heaviest for the three acts we have called back to the stage. There has been a tie for second place up to now. Now, I'm going to ask Harry to hold his hand over the heads of these uh, boys. They're all boys tonight. And as I call the names, I'm going to ask you to a kindly applaud once again, if you will, and select your winners for first and second prizes. Now, first, the uh, 61-year-old gentleman who sang the Scott songs, Mr. William Lanigan. <laughs> and then from Brooklyn, the boy you heard, uh, heard sing last, Vesta La Juba, Irving Redhalls. <laughs> and then the two Franks from Jersey City with their hot guitars and bass fiddle imitation, Boys who sang Mama Don't Allow No So-and-So round here. The two friends. <laughs> and what does the machine say, Harry? Right up, Fred. Thank you. Here's the first prize, $50 and, uh, in cash, and a week's engagement at the Roxy Theater in New York City goes to Master Irving Rethold. <laughs> the decimal rating of 96 and a half. The second prize... $25 in cash. There is a tie for second prize. The two Franks and Mr. Lanigan, both who will receive $25 in cash. Thank you a lot. Thank you and good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket as some follow the fleet. This is the National Broadcasting Company.